walk us through the play where, you know, you get ejected Saturday, but it looks like you're just trying to bat down a pass. Just kind of walk us through it from your perspective. Yeah, so, I mean, just trying to basically just make a play. I mean, you know, I saw him get ready to throw it, so I jumped up and tried to um, basically just try to hit it like you just said. And um, the instinct was just to duck my head down, but that was just – this is what I grew up playing football is to use your head. But, I mean, that's really what I was trying to do. It wasn't any – like, I was really trying to target his head or something like that. But it was just what – just really just instincts, just playing football. Xavier, this is Pete. This is Pete at AP. How are you feeling? And can you talk to us about what it was like to go through what you've gone through in order to get back on the field? I'm actually feeling a lot better. I mean, I'm, it's a really week to week thing. I'm feeling better each week, and I'm getting better each week. Um, really, was just coming back in the summer. I was just really winded. My my breathing wasn't really good coming back, recovering from COVID, and it was really affecting me. Um, real referee, and then I. We're starting to make a little bit of progress, and I got struck. We're stripping back even more. So I'm really feeling good now. I'm, I'm building each week. I'm getting a lot of days stacked up together, a lot of good days, and a lot of good weeks stacked together. and just making progress every week. Xavier, it's Anna with Clemson 24-7. Um, what's about your weight right now, and how far – I mean, do you feel like you're at a good weight, or are you still trying to drop some pounds? Yeah, I'm at about 270 right now. I'm definitely – Still working my way back down. My goal is about 255, 260, and that's still that'll be my goal for the um, remainder of the year. So that, that's where I'm at. But I have to keep making progress, like I said, every week, and just keep working with what I got. Hey Xavier, it's Josh from the Post and Courier. At what point in your recovery did you feel like you got your breath, your breathing, uh, back on track? I would say it really started to come back. I would say around week one, week two, and then I was just, I was training still, still doing my protocol. And then I was getting back into practice a little bit, doing some game day and things like that. And that's when I re I realized I was getting my win back and was getting back in football shape. And right now I'm really just getting my legs back like a lot. Um, just uh, having a lot of endurance, building my endurance back up in regards to actually playing football because running and doing conditioning is a lot different than actually playing football. And that's down the standpoint. So I'm still building everything back up. And, so, like I said, just keep making progress every week. David, this is Matt Connolly with the state newspaper. What What was it like for you mentally when you were going through everything? And then I know this was going to be a big year for you coming into your junior year. Um, it was definitely it was definitely rough at first. Um, but I had a lot of support from my family, friends, and my coaching teammates. I mean, just got to follow his plan, and this this is what my journey would be, and. Not what, definitely not what I planned. Like you said, it was a real big year for me. I want to come in and have a big, my best and big year. But like I said, follow the journey and follow his plan and just follow and stay the course and, and do anything I can. Just control what I can control. I mean, this was out of my control this year. So I'm just doing what I can. At any point, were you worried about like if, if you would ever be able to get back to 100% or, or with the breathing or anything? Did you ever worry about that at all? Uh, I, I didn't really worry about that. I knew I would definitely I'll end up being 100 um, percent regardless. But it was just the timing of it. Like it, it was it was very frustrating at first by the timing of it because I was at a really good point at the spring at the spring ball and then dealing with the COVID stuff. It just set me back a lot, and that was real frustrating at first. But like I said, I've, I it definitely has grown me a lot mentally and personally. Just really a challenge for me. Do you recall what it was like the first time you were working out or practicing and you you were having trouble breathing? Like when when was that? What were you doing? Like what when did you notice that? Really, we like the summer training when we were um, before fall camp and things like that. I realized like the struggle it would get real tight in my chest and everything would tighten down and I would really be hard, really be struggling to breathe. So I really just had to talk to my coaches and things like that and tell them what I was going through. And when we had a protocol. Um, protocol for me and that's when the red shirt thing came out and then now that red shirts were gone because of the, the standpoints this year but the protocol was having just to slowly put me back in things like that and it's been going great. Xavier is Trevor from CUTigers.com. Um, how, how good did it feel to, to get that sack on Saturday and I, I know you you almost had one on, on Sy against Syracuse the week before but um, just how good did that feel and, and is there any way you can kind of quantify how close to 100% you are right now physically? 
Um, I would say I'm about I would say I'm about halfway there. I know where I can be and I know like the the best I can be and I'm nowhere near that. But like I said, I just work with what I got right now. And I mean it felt good to get a um set. Um I actually did have one in Syracuse. I was I could have had two um against Syracuse, but I missed one. But I had one last week and I had one against Boston College this week. But I mean, it feels good just to be back out there and just going back out there and giving all I got with what I have dealing dealing with right now. So it feels good. David, how do you feel like the, the young defensive line has played? Obviously, you've been out. Uh, Justin's been out here. He hasn't played. It. Uh, Logan moved on. Just all three of you guys have been out. How do you feel like those those young group has played? And what's it been like having, I guess, the three starters from last year now all, all gone? Yeah, those guys have stepped up big time. I mean, we all knew those guys to play ball way back when they came into the spring. And we knew we would have a great young D-line. And the, just the talent those guys have and the work that they put in just really – it's really special. I mean, just to see that those young guys come in with such a mature mindset and just coming in to work, not really paying attention to all the outside media and just coming in to work. So it's, this is a very special group of guys. Hey, Xavier, it's Josh again. Who are some of the people you rely on from like a mental standpoint to help you get through the whole thing? Um, basically what I was going through, I would definitely rely on my teammates hey. to keep me motivated and stay positive and just take it day by day and sleep stacking days and my coaches, of course, and then my family and friends. I mean, just keep motivating me every day and just staying positive and make sure I just keep stacking my days and staying and keep making progress. Xavier, this is Pete at AP again. Um, for people like myself who've never, who've not gotten the illness, what's it like to get COVID and then get over it? Yeah, so I know I know a lot of people who like some of my teammates who really don't have no symptoms, and I was one of the first people to really get it um, back after spring. And my symptoms were like really bad. I had a really bad fever, and my body was really bad, um, feeling really weak and stuff like that. But my symptoms were really bad, and with the breathing and stuff, like like I was talking about with the tightness in my chest and things like that when I was trying to work, um, it was pretty tough to get over, but. Uh, like I said, they had, the protocol we had was great. They had a great plan for me, and it's been going out great. How do you – I mean, do you feel like – I don't know. You're, uh, you've got the antibodies. You're not going to get it anymore. Do you feel, you know, invincible now that you've gotten past COVID? Yeah, I, I definitely – it definitely gives me a little, little um, boost, I, I guess I would say, because a lot of people who, like, kind of scared because they haven't gotten it yet and they see what's going on. But I don't feel like I would ever get it again, and I don't feel like – Nothing else would really put me back at this point. I feel like I've been through it all. Xavier, this is Grace Rayner from The Athletic. Just as a follow-up, um, did you, like, immediately know that it might be COVID-related? Like, had you ever felt anything like that before when you did start getting symptoms? No, I definitely didn't know. This was really when it was new. Um, it was back in, I think, March or April. And I was, like, really one of the first very people to get it. And I was um, – this was when you had to call. I had to call my athletic trainer, Danny, and tell him my symptoms. And then I had to call in to Greenville, and I had to go get tested there. This was when everybody was sent home back then, right before everything started. And then they told me I had it. And I would go up the stairs and downstairs in my home, and then I would come back up, and my chest would be tight. And then that's when those symptoms was coming in. I didn't really know what COVID was back then. But now that we know, and then they told me I was positive. And then I had already went through the symptoms for about a week, and my results had come back for about – a week or so. So I had already dealt with the bad symptoms, but not knowing it was COVID. But after that, and then realizing it was, and that's when I was really over it. The symptoms. Xavier, this is Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Do you have any idea how you got it? Uh, I, I really wouldn't be able to say. I mean, it was really was just out just doing regular things that we do. I mean, unless you just live in the box, I feel like I, didn't, I don't really know how I could have got it. Xavier, I'm sorry. So you got it sometime in March or early April. You said is when you think you got it. When do you, when did the the total impact of like the respiratory symptoms go away for you? Like when did you feel like you were breathing normally again? Oh yeah, I, I said it was around like week one or week two was when it was like fully getting away. When I was doing like the protocols ever since fall camp and just gradually going forward every day, doing gradually increasing my conditioning and things like that and what I was doing. So you spent like the better part of five months kind of dealing with it at some level. Yeah.
that had to have been pretty frustrating to feel like, you know, some people are getting this and not even feeling symptoms. And here I am five months later and I'm still dealing with it. Yeah, it was very frustrating, like I said, but I had a lot of support behind me. Um, just um, let, let me, helping me stick through it and just staying positive. I mean, it was, a, like I said, it was a big, very big year coming. I was at a really great point. Um, at the spring ball and then everything just got set back and everything just fell down on me. So it was real tough, but like I said, I've been, had a lot of support behind me and it was just staying positive. Trevor, have you talked, I mean, um, Xavier, have you talked to Trevor about keeping his spirits up during yeah, his uh, bout with COVID? Yeah, after we found out, I definitely reached out to him and told him that we um, we loved him, man, and we, um, we got him like while he's out and we'll hold it down for him. Xavier, what was it like for you as really the whole country was talking about this virus, and, but, but you were actually living it at that time. It was a weird for you to sort of, when you turn on the TV or look at your phone, you hear people talking about it, but you're actually, you know, going through it. What was that like for you? Um, I mean, it was tough. I mean, just seeing people talk about it and things like that. But like I said earlier, I had a lot of support behind me and just, just kept staying positive. Really, that's all I really could do and control what I could control. Like I said, it was a really out of my control with the whole situation. So I can only just work with what I have. Hey Xavier, it's Trevor again. If I could just ask a question about Notre Dame, just what, what you've seen from them on film and, and what you remember about um, Ian Book and that offense from two years ago in the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, so they pretty much have the same offensive line from my freshman year when we played against them. Um, they have a really talented offensive line, really talented, talented offense. And, and Ian Book can really make some plays and really extend plays, so we have to do our best to contain him. And they have some really good um, tight end group um, and some great outside receivers. So we'll do our best to contain him, and it's a real talented team, so we got to come with our head guys. Xavier, you, you get to see a super talented quarterback all the time on practice with Trevor. Uh, I'm wondering if there was anything from the spring or over the, the, the summer that stuck out to you about DJ when he got onto campus and what you've seen from him in practice. Yeah, we definitely already knew DJ was special. I mean, it was definitely a shocker when Trevor got COVID, but it really wasn't a big scare. I mean, we know DJ is a great player and the things that he can do, we know that Clemson's going to be in great hands when Trevor um, decides to leave after whatever. I mean, so we know that DJ is a great player, so we really wasn't worried that much because he's a, he can make some great things happen, as you can see this past week. Were you uh, surprised or weirded out to see a quarterback that's only like 15 or 20 pounds less than you are out there doing the things that the DJ does? Uh, yeah, we always be called, um, we joke around with him because because of how big he is. And we would say just like, basically just messing with him, say he's a running back and stuff. And like he can run the ball really well because of how big he is. But I mean, we mess with him a lot, um, give him a hard time about it. But he just that's just how special he is, how big he is. And it's the plays that he can make and the ability he has. Hey, Xavier, this is Anna with Clemson 24-7. What stands out to you about Notre Dame's offensive line um, and their run game with uh, the, the two backs, Kyron and Chris Tyree? I would say just the, the experience they have, and they can they can really move. Like, you can see them, um, like, when, they, when they're pulling and when they're going on the outside of the block, DBs, they're not just some stiff old lineman just running out there and that you can just dodge and make miss. They can really move and really come get you, so. It's really, it'll really be a challenge for us, and we're ready for the challenge. Any other questions for Xavier? Xavier, the defense last week uh, it gave up some points early and then came through in the uh, second half and really shut down BC. Do you think maybe the jitters of so many new faces on there, having to replace guys like Skalski and Jones and who are out, you think that's over and now everything is kind of can get back to normal in preparation for the for this week with Notre Dame? Yeah, definitely. I definitely think um I had a couple of young guys in there who just really just had to get comfortable in there. I mean, just going out there and asking some um true freshmen to go out there and just make plays and play in a, that big of a stage and that big of a game. I mean, it's kind of it's tough. I mean, so just going there, just letting them get comfortable, I definitely think that plays a part. So I really feel like we'll be a lot more prepared with those young guys in there. Thanks, Gary. Hey, this is uh, Todd in Spartanburg. I'm just wondering how tough it's going to be to to watch that first half this week. <laughs> It'll be pretty tough, man. I, I was really regretting putting my head down like that after I watched the replays and stuff like that. Um, 
just the fact that I do have to set out the first half. And I know it's pretty cold on there, so I'll be pretty cold on the sideline. Is okay. it, with, mindset now ahead, moving, what's your mindset now moving forward just trying to figure out this year and, and uh, looking ahead to next year, just trying to get healthy and everything? Yeah, really just, like I said, just keep making progress every week and just um, see, where I am, see where I am, just help this team out in whatever ways I can this year and just see where I'm at in the end of the year and go from there.